Almost no one knows this place exists, yet every major leap in modern technology begins here. Hidden behind quiet walls is a lab that shapes the devices you will use 10 or even 20 years from now. Today, for the first time, I'm taking you inside this secret world. What you are about to see is normally kept far from the public eye. These inventions will define the future of smartphones, laptops, and the AI systems that run our planet. But before we open the door, we must face a difficult truth. For 50 years, we lived through a miracle that is now coming to an end. The Miracle and the Wall As a chip design engineer, I often think about how unreal the last half century has been. For decades, we doubled the number of transistors on a chip roughly every two years. That growth lifted the entire computing world. To see how massive this change was, look at NVIDIA's first GPU, the GeForce 256. It used the 220 nanometer process in 1999. Today, NVIDIA is ramping up Rubin on 3 nanometer technology. In just 25 years, we shrank transistors more than 70 times. Small pieces of silicon became engines that now drive the AI revolution. It feels impossible, yet engineers kept carving machines at the edge of the atomic scale. But the era of easy progress is ending. Transistors are now only a few atoms wide. They bend. They overheat. They break. Even new materials we once hoped would save us scale too slowly. If we fail to create a new kind of device, the computing revolution simply stops. That would freeze progress in AI, space technology, and even the phones in our pockets. When the world's largest tech companies ran out of answers, they turned to one unlikely place. A small lab in Belgium that few have ever heard of. The place where impossible ideas live. That place is Imec, located in the quiet town of Leuven. It is not a chip maker in the usual sense. It is a research center that works 10 to 20 years ahead of everyone else. If you follow any advanced chip back to its roots, whether from Nvidia, AMD, Intel, Samsung, or Apple, the trail leads not to Silicon Valley, but to these buildings. IMEC is where impossible physics problems are turned into working devices long before any company uses them. Every modern device today runs on FinFET transistors. Picture a tiny silicon ridge with a thin fin rising from it. This design was a hero for a full decade, powering everything from Apple Silicon to the GPUs that fill massive data centers. But its time was ending. The fins had to get thinner to keep shrinking. When something becomes 6 nanometers wide and 60 nanometers tall, it becomes fragile. Many fins simply bent or snapped during production. When the problems became too complex and costly, companies stopped trying to solve them alone. Intel, Samsung, ASML, and TSMC gathered at IMEC to search for a new path. They tested materials, shapes, and ideas. Most failed. One wrong bet could set the entire industry back by 10 years. Then a simple sketch on a whiteboard changed everything. The turning point, flipping the future sideways. The idea was almost too simple. If the tall fin kept collapsing, what if engineers flipped the structure sideways? That sketch became the second biggest turning point in microchip history. It led to the invention of the gate all around transistor. Instead of one tall fin, engineers stacked thin sheets horizontally. They were easier to support, easier to build, and they solved the mechanical failures that were killing FinFET. This new device is now entering chips in future GPUs and smartphones. It gives us a few more generations of progress, but it is not the final answer. Even with this innovation, we are still running out of space. So IMEC asked a bold question. If cities build upward when land runs out, why can't chips do the same? If we cannot shrink in two dimensions, we must rise in the third. Stack one transistor on another, and you double the density at once. That idea gave birth to CFET technology. Before touching a wafer, researchers simulate designs for years. They adjust geometry, materials, and structures. They test every idea, then remove the weak ones. One design survived. It became the path forward. For the first time, we began building chips in true 3D. To witness this, we had to enter the clean room. Inside the clean room and beyond the limits of sight. 
Inside the clean room, every speck of dust is a danger. We put on oversized suits, step through blasts of filtered air, and walk into a world where one stray hair can destroy a million dollar experiment. Our first stop was the scanning electron microscope. A modern transistor is 100 times smaller than a virus, so normal microscopes are useless. Light cannot bounce off something so small, only electrons can reveal it. We placed the wafer inside. A narrow beam scanned the surface. At low magnification we saw lines. 50,000 times patterns appeared. At 150,000 metal contacts became clear. But electron beams are brutal. Stay too long on one spot and the sample burns. To see deeper, we had to cut a slice thinner than DNA. This tiny piece lets us reveal the nanosheet channel where current flows. But even this microscope could not show atoms. For that, we had to leave the fab and use a far stronger tool. The transmission electron microscope can magnify 50 million times. It lets electrons pass through the slice to form an image. On the screen, we saw bright metal shapes and faint silicon regions. The nanosheet appeared like a thin thread. For the first time, we looked at two stacked transistors, the heart of CFET. When we zoomed in, individual atoms appeared. The channel was only about 30 atoms thick. It was the physical limit of reality. But every second risked destroying the sample. Seeing it felt like watching a shooting star. Beautiful, brief, and fragile. The race to build the next frontier. These images are not just for show. SEM and TEM are essential steps in creating new chip technology. Each device is built through thousands of steps. At each, engineers must check if the structure still matches the design. If it fails, they must find out why. From idea to the chip in your hand takes 18 to 20 years. I spoke with Serge Biesmans, who led CFET development. He said the simple image we saw took four years of work to achieve. Even with perfect design, if tools cannot build it, the idea dies. Moore's law is not only about design, it depends on the equipment. To build CFET, the industry needed new etching tools, new deposition systems, new ways to grow and remove layers without damage, and a new way to deliver power from the backside of the wafer. The tools cost millions. The EUV scanner alone costs more than $250 million. Before any company gets these tools, iMEC tests them here. They run an entire pilot line like a test kitchen. They refine the recipe until every step works together. CFET is still being perfected, yet iMEC is already working on what comes next. Because if you wait for a technology to reach its limit, you are already late. The unknown future and the new definition of progress. Kvet may carry us to 2030, but it cannot solve everything. It cannot cut power and heat enough for future AI demands. No clear map exists after it. The next leap may require stacking more layers or mixing different materials. Around 2020, shrinking transistors became painfully hard. The heat rose, costs exploded. The old version of Moore's law collapsed. Now performance must come from the whole system not just smaller transistors. Companies now place many chiplets side by side or vertically, but communication between them wastes energy. A powerful answer is silicon for photonics, which uses light instead of electricity. Today, it connects GPU racks across data centers. Soon it will move inside chip packages, but it still needs too much power for daily devices. Lasers are hot and need constant control. iMEC works on materials that could fix this, like barium titanate. If they succeed, light could replace electrical links inside your laptop or phone. iMEC is also testing full wafer stacking, where entire layers of chips are aligned like two cities placed one on top of the other. This could remove most wiring and allow mixing of many materials. After that, we might move to devices that use new physics entirely. IMEC researchers test ternary logic, reversible logic, spintronics, cryogenic CMOS, and materials like germanium, graphene, 2D crystals, and carbon nanotubes. The future is wide open. IMEC has saved the future of chips more than once. Today, it stands between progress and the limits of physics. In these labs, ideas rise and fall tools evolve, and the next 10 to 20 years of computing are shaped long before the world sees them. 
chips may soon become vertical structures, glowing with light instead of electric signals, and built from materials just a few atoms thick. None of this is certain, but it all begins in this quiet place in Belgium. If you enjoyed this journey, share it, and explore the next video where I show how a semiconductor factory is built.